Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The Lord is good and he's worthy of every praise. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. We are excited. Yes, we are in our revival. Um, this is our second night of revival. And if you have not been here, you have missed a treat. So we are here and we're ready to go forth in the word of God. And we're ready. Amen. For prophetess Tracy Magwood. Let me tell you about this dynamic woman of God. She is anointed. She has been appointed by God. And she is doing a great work for the kingdom. Yes, she is holy, sanctified. She has three beautiful children and she is on fire for the Lord. Yes, she has operated in all five fold of the ministry. And she has operated as pastor, starting with saints on the move. Amen. She right now, she is the visionary of Warriors on the Wall, Prayer Ministry International, and she has traveled, she has done revivals, she has done many of conferences, and she has a word from the Lord tonight. So we thank God that we are graced by this woman of God. Amen. We thought last night was something. Wait until you hear the prophetic sound that's coming from heaven. Praise God. She has a direct connection with God. And let me tell you, if she prophesy a thing, it shall come to pass. So if you have not done so yet, I need you to share this broadcast. I need you, those that are on Facebook Live, if you would tag someone in the broadcast on tonight, tag them in. We need this word to go globally across the nation. So I need your help. Please tag those that are on Zoom, go to your contacts, send the flyer, share, share the link for those to log in because we are going to reach heaven on tonight. So I am happy she is a man, the prophet, the prophetess for global apostolic movement. Amen. She is fully operational and fully capable of delivering the word of God from the mantle of the Lord. Amen. So we are ready and we are excited and on fire for the fresh oil that is about to fall from heaven. Come on, come on. Let's thank God and welcome our very own prophetess, Tracy Magwood. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Chief Apostle LaShawn Reese, our Apostle of Global Apostolic Movement. Good evening, everyone. Truly, it is a blessing to be with you all tonight. I just want to give God honor and praise and acknowledge him. I thank him tonight for who he is and what he's about to do. As Chief Apostle said, there is a word from the Lord tonight. And truly, when any invitation comes, I always seek God because a word out of season can be destructive to the person once they hear the word and receive the word. In other words, a prophet can always prophesy, but the word of the Lord must be a word for that particular season for that person. Amen. And so Apostle asked you to send someone the invite. If you're watching by Zoom, if you're on Facebook, like, share, and tag somebody tonight. Spirit of the living God, I thank you tonight. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. God, tonight, I ask that you would breathe upon me. Without you, I am nothing. But you, I can do all things. Father, the letter can but the spirit giveth life. And so God, I worship you tonight. I magnify you tonight. I exalt you and I lift you up. And God, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen 
and amen. Scripture reading tonight is coming from a very familiar passage. Amen. It's coming from the gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. We're going to read verses 13 through 15, and I'm going to ask Minister Lyons if she would be so kind to read the word of the Lord coming from the gospel according to St. John's, the 20th chapter, verses 13 through 15, thus the reading of God's word. Amen. Good evening. And I will be reading John 20, verses 13 through 15 in the Amplified Version. And it reads as thus. And they said to her, woman, why are you crying? She told them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. 14. After saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. 15 and the final verse reads, Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? For whom are you looking? Supposing that he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you are the one who has carried him away from here, Tell me where you put where you have put him, and I will take him away. The word, word of God, God for the people of the blessed be to God. Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Lyons. Amen. When we look at John, the 20th chapter, verse 15 is our focus scripture tonight. Mary Magdalene was questioned by Jesus. For whom are you looking? Supposing that he was the gardener, she replied, Sir. If you are the one who carried him away from here, tell me where you have put him and I will take him away. John 20, 15 puzzled me as to why she would think a gardener was addressing her at a tomb, not, not a sexton, a person who would be in charge of a cemetery, a person who would keep the records of those that are, uh, are buried in that particular cemetery, but she referred to him as a gardener. And I wanna talk to you tonight with the message that God has given to me and the word of the Lord is entitled ground keeper. When we look at verse 15, the word of the Lord says that she addressed him as a gardener. And as we look at a gardener, we look at a person that would tend to the garden, but instead she should have looked at him as being a groundkeeper of a cemetery because a groundkeeper would be the one who would maintain and upkeep the cemetery. In our focus scripture, John 20, verse 15, Mary calls him a gardener. When we look at a gardener, it has many synonyms. And a synonym is a morphine or a phrase that mean exactly or nearly the same as the word. Mary could have used the term landscaper. She could have used the term agriculturist. She could have used the term farmer or garden, a groundkeeper, but instead she used the word gardener. When we look at the word gardener and groundkeeper, the word is used interchangeably. After researching the scripture, I discovered in John 19 verses 41 through 42 that the place of the crucifixion was near a garden where there were, new, there were new tombs and it was used, um, it, they were in the, the preparation stage for the Jewish holiday. And so Nicodemus and Joseph Arimathea, from Arimathea, he understood that they had to get the body in the ground because it was near sundown and sundown would be the time that it was the day of preparation. Since the tomb was nearby, since the tomb was the place that they went to bury him, 
the groundkeeper would have been the person that would have instructed or directed them. But Mary Magdalene understood that the gardener was the one who would upkeep and maintain in her natural mind. And so when we look at a groundkeeper, specifically, they tend to an area to maintain its aesthetic. And aesthetic is a set of principles underlining or guiding the work of a particular artist. I need you to remember that. And functional purposes. And so a groundkeeper was one that would maintain the aesthetic, the beauty of a ground or a particular location or place. It would appear Adam was the first groundkeeper. According to the Bible, Adam was given the job to take care of the grounds in the land of Eden. He was supposed to maintain a set of principles underlining and guiding the work of the creator. Are you hearing me? I'm gonna repeat one more time. According to the Bible, God gave Adam the job of caring for the ground. And so what God said to Adam, Adam, here is my creation. And what I would like for you to do is take care of maintaining the, the, the authenticity of my creation. According to Genesis 2 and 15, it says, so the Lord God took man and he settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it as a groundkeeper. Adam assumed the responsibility from God to tend to the garden. Genesis 2, verses 16 through 17. Would you read, Minister Lyons? Genesis 2, verse 16 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely, unconditionally, without limitations eat from every tree in the garden. Verse 17 says, but, but only, only from the tree of the knowledge, recognition of the good and evil, you shall not eat. Otherwise on that day, you will, you eat from it, you shall most likely die, certainly die. Why am I gonna die, God, when you made me the groundkeeper of this land and you've given me access to all that's in the Garden of Eden? Oh, uh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. But, but, but what a groundkeeper responsibility was supposed to be is take care of the aesthetics. That means whatever God put in place, Adam had the responsibility to care for it, maintain it, and make sure it functioned as he ordained it to function. Ah, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, help me. And so according to Genesis 3 and 6, Minister Lyons and the word of the And Lord. when, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. And when the woman saw, saw that the tree was good for food mm -hmm. and that it was delightful to look uh -huh. at and a tree to be desired in she order saw, to make one wise. She saw that the tree was good. So even after hearing the instructions yes. from God. After getting the word from God, her eyes began to deceive her. She began to look upon that which God told her not to touch, not to take hold of. Well, prophet is what are you saying? God said, when I gave Adam the responsibility of being a ground keeper, once I created the earth and I created him from the earth and I made him in my likeness, I gave him the responsibility as a ground keeper, but he couldn't maintain the ground according to God, help me, Holy Ghost. What, what does the word say? Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. 
In order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband with her and he ate. At that moment, the creator recognized that the earth has not, has been contaminated. And he knew at that very moment that the earth would no longer yield her fruit. What do you say? God said that I created man. I made him in my likeness. I made him in my image. And I gave him the responsibility of maintaining the ground. But instead, man has violated his first employment in the earth realm. And God has said to the church tonight, the reason I had to send my son Jesus is because the earth abandon her responsibility back in the book of Genesis when I gave her control, when I gave her access, when I gave her the responsibility, God help me on the ghost. Genesis 4 and 2 says, later she gave birth to his Eve, brother. Me and Eve gave birth to a son by Adam and his name was Abel. And the word of God says, when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. So now here's another responsibility, another opportunity that God gave to the man of God, Adam, to redeem humanity, to redeem mankind. He said, since you couldn't get it right, I'll let it be through your bloodline. I'll cause your son Cain to begin to till the ground. I'll cause Cain to begin to work the ground. I'll cause Cain to keep oh, control and the, uh, keep, keep control of the aesthetics of the ground. I'll cause Cain to maintain the beauty of my sanctuary. Of my sanctuary. And what are you saying, prophetess? But then the word of God says, I believe this was the father's way of trying to restore humanity back to God. Oh God, I want to teach it tonight. I, I'll get an opportunity to preach, but, but, but this was God's opportunity to say, listen, Adam, you messed up. Mm -hmm. I called to be a groundkeeper, but instead of you maintaining the ground, you messed up. And so I won't cut off your bloodline, but I'll give another opportunity through your son, Cain. Mm -hmm. Genesis, the fourth chapter, verse eight says, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, about what God had said. Uh huh. He, when he they had were alone, some communication with his brother, he heard from God. He, he got some instruction from God. The scripture says that God spoke to Cain and he told Cain, Cain, sin is crouching at your door. But I called you as a groundkeeper. I called you specifically to tend to an area of the land to maintain its aesthetic a set of principles underlining and guiding the work of a particular artist. Who's the artist? I am the artist, the creator, the Lord God who made you. Now, Cain, understand, there's sin crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you first must master it. You, you first got to allow it to gain control. It's knocking at your door. So I'm going to give an opportunity for you to understand that if you allow this sin to come in, it's not just going to mess up you, but it's going to mess up generations that follow you. Genesis, the fourth chapter, verse eight out of the Amplified Bible, and it reads, Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to I bear. I need you to go to verse eight, verse eight again. And it reads, Cain talked Cain with, talk with Abel, Abel, his brother, about what God had said. And when they were alone, working in the field, Cain attacked Abel, his brother, and killed him. Cain, the groundkeeper, attacked 
the ground. What are you saying, prophetess? The scripture says that from the dirt, we came. Scripture says, and from the dirt, he created us. And so here you have the dirt attacking the dirt. What are you saying, prophetess? Here you have creation attacking the creator. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. Here you have humanity defying the odds of God. But God is saying to the church tonight, it would be okay if the sin had stopped with Adam. It would have been okay if it had stopped with Cain. But then when you look at Cain's bloodline, there was another that killed, that had the murdering spirit. Where are you, prophetess? Where are you? Let, 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 let's, look. let's look at the word. And, and so now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth. Now the very mm -hmm. creation mm -hmm. is now cursed by the creator in the land of the created. Ah, my God. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying that now you're cursed from the ground, the very place I ordained you to walk, the very place I ordained you to have dominion, authority, and power, the very place that I called you to have authority over is now cursed. You're now cursed, which, why is it cursed? Why am I cursed? Why? Can I not produce? Why can I not give birth? Why can I not see the fruit of my labor? Why? Because you've allowed the blood of your brother. Scripture says that Cain asked the question, am I my brother's keeper? And, and God was asking him, where, where is your brother? Where is your brother Cain? Cain got slick with God. Here the creation, the dust, the dirt, getting slick with God, saying, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Am I my brother's keeper? You know how we get in the church. Mm -hmm. Scripture says that now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand, the very hand that you were called to plow the land with, the very hand that you were called to cultivate the land, the very hand that you were called, glory, to tend to the land and maintain its ecstatic. That land is now drinking of the blood from your brother. And because of it, he said, when you work the ground, it's not going to yield anything any longer. In other words, when you think about coming forth and doing the work of ministry, you might go and do some things, but it won't be productive. Why? Because you've allowed the blood of an innocent man to cry out. You know how we do in the church. I'm talking about ground keepers tonight. Are you a ground keeper? God has assigned you to the ground. I, I, I want you to understand that, that, that Cain became a fugitive, a wanderer on the earth in Genesis 4, verses 11 through 12, it says, Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. At this moment, God needed a groundkeeper who would understand his assignment in the earth realm. God needed a ground keeper who would help with the authenticity of the kingdom. God needed a ground keeper who understood Psalm 24 verses one through two. When it's read, it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas. He had founded it. In the New Living Translation, it says, for he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and he built it on the ocean's depth. God said, the reason I need a ground keep 
deeper is because I'm looking for someone who can understand their assignment in the earth. He needed a groundkeeper that could operate in the earth realm when it came to pruning the earth. He needed a groundkeeper that was a vessel who had experience in cutting off the flesh and cutting back parts of the flesh. The Bible says every time I want to do good, evil is present with me. The thing I don't want to do, I find myself getting caught up in it. So God said, let me do this. Let me do this for you, humanity. Let me put a ground keeper in the earth. Let me get someone that will help maintain the aesthetics of my creation. Let me get someone who can maintain the beauty of my creation. Let me get someone who understand the rules and the regulations of the kingdom. Let me get someone who understands that a ground keeper need to be fruitful and multiply. So, so God needed a ground keeper that would shape the culture of society. In other words, God said, I need a ground keeper that say, yes, that might be the norm, but that's not the norm for the kingdom. I need a ground keeper that might say, yes, everybody's doing it, but the Bible lets me know that I got to keep the aesthetic of the kingdom. That means I don't think like the world. I don't act like the world. I don't function like the world. The Bible says, Paul spoke. He said, when I was a child, I did childish things. I act like a child. When I was in the world, I had ways of the world. I had tendencies of the world. But when I became a ground keeper, my God, when I realized the creation and the creator that I served, I understood that I had to do things differently. It couldn't be business as usual. I understood that as a ground keeper, I had to be fruitful and multiply. As a ground keeper, I had to scale back some of the ways of the world because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I come to tell you tonight as a ground keeper, as a grounds keeper, you got to understand that this is why Mary identified the Jesus as a groundkeeper. Remember, we're using it interchangeably with Gardner. She identified the groundkeeper because it was the groundkeeper who went down in the dirt and he picked me up and he he cleaned me up and he he took me out of my sin. Anybody besides me when God had to go way down and pick you up? I mean, I'm talking about the mud and the miry clay. He cleaned you up. Mary said, I, I, I missed it the first time when, when he came and he saved me, but, but now I got to find him because I understand that, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I got, I got to get it together because Adam messed up in the garden and, and his son Cain messed up and, and, and then his grandson Lamech messed up. Now I can't mess up. Mary said I gotta get it together. Why? Because if I miss this groundkeeper with this groundkeeping opportunity, I might not have a chance to do my first works over. Mary identified him as a groundkeeper. He wanted her to understand his purpose of coming in the earth realm. I was trying to figure out when God spoke this particular passage to me, God, what does a gardener have to do with the groundkeeper? I'm glad you asked, Tracy. He said, you gotta understand that, that the original plan that I set in the earth is I took man from dirt. Is it anybody on this line tonight? Anybody on Zoom tonight? Anybody on Facebook or YouTube tonight that understand that you came from dirt and dirt you shall return? What are you saying, prophetess? Can I pause for a moment to let you know that God is looking for some ground keepers who understood the wages of their sin was death and so they came from the dirt, the darkness, the sins of their past, but now I got an opportunity to go in the dirt and pull 
for somebody else. Uh, I'm looking for some ground keepers uh, that don't mind going back to the dirt. Don't mind going back to the bar. Don't mind. Don't you get caught in the bar. Going back to the to the prostitute house, uh, going back to the drug house. Why? Because you were in that dirt and the very dirt he pulled you out of. He's saying, I'm looking for some evangelists that don't mind getting dirty. Don't, don't get, I, I don't want to get my clothes dirty. So, so I don't want to get my shoes dirty. Huh? So I'm not going to walk among those individuals. You, you know, those individuals. Scripture says that, that when the Samaritan was on uh, on his way, he saw a man that had been beaten and he had been robbed. And when he looked at that man, he, he saw him bleeding and, and he saw him dirty and he saw him lying there. But, but scripture tells me prior to the Samaritan, there were some religious folks that passed by. Some of y'all church folks, the ones that sing praise and worship, the ones who say praise is what you do. Some of you religious folks that preach in the pulpit, some of you religious folks that speak in tongues. It was some of you that scripture says you move to the other side because you said I'm a ground keeper, but I only want to observe the ground. I want to observe the ground. I, I want to observe the ground. I don't want to get dirty. don't want my hands to get dirty. Just got my nails done. Just got a pedicure. Just got a manicure. Don't want to get dirty. God said, I'm looking for some ground keepers that don't mind getting dirty. I'm looking for some ground keepers that don't mind getting dirty. Are there any ground keepers on this watch? Are there any ground keepers in game that don't mind getting dirty? If I got to go way down where, where God picked me up and picked somebody else up, I'll pull them up. Why? Because once I was in sin, far from the peace for sure. Oh God, come tonight and help me help an old wretched soul like me. I don't mind getting a little dirt on me. A ground keeper today, God is looking for a ground keeper like his son Jesus, someone who's willing to cut away at your flesh, someone who understands that when you go out, you got to be fruitful out there. He's looking for someone who can get fruitfulness out of earthen vessels. He's looking for someone that can go and look at the earth, even in her barren state, and say, I can pry away at the stony hearts of men and let them know through the seeds that I plant that God still have a work for them to do. Paul, oh, you might plant the seed of Paulus. You might water the seed, but God gives the increase. I'm looking for some ground keepers that said, I'm not content sitting in the pulpit. I got to get to the hedges and highways and compel men to come. A ground keeper. God's looking for a ground keeper that can prune the earth. When you prune the earth, you 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 help heal the diseased, those that don't have a peace of mind. He's looking for some ground keepers that know how to go and lay hands on the sick and declare they shall recover. He's looking for some ground keepers that are diseased, discomfort, dealing with depression and oppression and suicidal ideations. I'm not going to leave you to yourself. He's looking for some ground keepers who can restore hope to the nun productive creation. I, I know you're not giving God the best you can give him now, but if you just hang in there and allow God to create in you a clean heart and renew in you a right spirit, it will bring you back to your original purpose. I need men and women of God that will release my glory in the earth. I'm looking for men and women of God that will go to the gates of hell and declare like Moses did Pharaoh, let my people go. I'm looking for some men and women of God, said the Lord God Almighty, that will go into the hedges and highways and compel men to come under. He said, I need some men 
and women that will release my glory in the earth like a groundkeeper that spray trees and plants in order to protect them from insects and diseases. Scripture tells me that they are some that have left from among you, but they were never with you in the first place. Scripture tells me in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 15 through 20, and I'm gonna paraphrase it. It tells you to be aware of false prophets, teachers who come to you dressed as she appearing to be gentle and innocent, but inwardly they are raging wolves. He said, I'm looking for some gatekeepers that are understand that if the, the gates of hell is trying to prevail against the church, you gatekeepers will go in and declare and decree and whatsoever you bind in earth, it'll already be bound in heaven. I'm looking for some gatekeepers, Kanye. Verse 16, Minister Lyons, would you read it? And the word reads, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Matthew is, 7 and verse 16. Scripture lets us know by the fruit, you would recognize them. In other words, you will hear their doctrine, but their doctrine won't be the doctrine of Jesus Christ. He said, I need some gatekeepers. I need some gatekeepers that, that understand that the garden that I placed you in, the, the grounds that I placed you over, I'm looking for some people in the fivefold ministry. And the scripture says, and he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers. Why did he give some? So that they can take care of the ground that I placed them in. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, Rebobo Pusanda Lorobo say Ramando Colella Lorobo Sheta Ramandu Nalarabo say Rabapu Sandando Rabo Senda. He said, False doctrine is rising up in the earth. And instead, you become afraid because you are not confrontational. You are not bold you are not one who would stand up against ungodly practices no i'm not talking those that are sinning that those that are falling short i'm talking about those that the scripture speaks of that were once among you yes. i heard somebody say they don't believe that hell is real but they grew up in the things of god they don't believe the Bible is the entirety of the word of God. But if I know that the Bible is the inspired word of God, it doesn't matter if John the Baptist wrote it or you wrote it. All I know is the Holy Ghost in me lets me know that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God, but the word took on dirt flesh. <laughs> the word got dirty. <laughs> My God, the word got dirty dirty. I'm looking for some people that don't mind getting dirty. You're the word. You're in the flesh. But God is saying, I'm looking for somebody that don't mind getting dirty. And, and what does the word say? Is that, 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 that verse 16, read it. Read it in its entirety. By and their fruit. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Uh -huh. That is, Lord. by their country contrive doctrine and self-focus do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from th threshold 17 uh-huh even so every healthy tree bears good fruit uh -huh. but unhealthy trees bear bad fruit uh-huh and 18 says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit Mm -hmm. 19, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. 20, therefore, by their fruit, you will recognize them. 
as false prophets. As false messengers, as false ground keepers. He said, there are some people among you that have a form of godliness, but let me tell you, they deny me and they deny the power of God that work in me through you and the power of God that work through you. What are you saying, prophetess? When you got people that are true and authentic ground keepers. They are preaching the unadulterated word of God. They're not compromising the word of God because you give a big offering, because I'm afraid that the size of my congregation might decrease. I'm afraid that you might stop giving, you might stop coming, you might stop supporting. God said, I'm looking for some ground keepers that understand when it's time to preach the word, preach it when they want to hear it, preach it when they don't want to hear it. When you go to your yard to water your garden as a groundkeeper, does your tree tell you, I don't want to be watered today, don't put no water on me today. No, a tree don't speak back to you. A tree receives what it is given. God is saying, how is it that humanity can tell me you don't need a savior? You don't need a kinsman redeemer. You don't need someone to step in the earth rim and redeem you, buy you back from sin. How is it that the creation can tell the creator, I don't need you? How do we tell him that? We start demonstrating in our actions. We don't even acknowledge him anymore. We just get up and make a move. We don't even call on his name anymore. We just get up and make a move. We don't even seek ye first the kingdom anymore. We just get up and we make a move. So God is saying you have made a bold statement that you don't need a ground keeper. And I come to tell you by the power of God invested in me during this holy week, God is calling for the ground keepers to rise up in the earth realm. Why? Because I need some folks that will preach the unadulterated word of God and understand by preaching the word of God, they are now washing the dirt. Have you ever got muddy while you were watering the ground? And maybe when you walk back on your pavement, you had mud on the ground, but when you took your water hose, you began to wash the water, you began to wash away the pavement, and you begin to wash away the dirt. What is it, prophet? I'm saying to you tonight, God is looking for some dirty folks uh, that don't mind washing uh, the people with the word of God. Uh, he said, and by the washing of the word, <laughs> it, it, it means that you will now become a good ground keeper by watering your plants and lawn as needed using and maintaining landscaping equipment. A groundkeeper understand that I gotta maintain. Not only do I have to maintain, but I gotta know how to utilize equipment. Can you imagine me getting on a tractor and driving it without having any lessons without having any instructions? How is it that the church universal is functioning, but they're saying you don't need the Holy Ghost? They're saying you don't need to be baptized with fire? They're saying all of that tongue business? They're saying we don't need the fivefold ministry and operation? The Bible said that he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be pastor, some to be teacher, some to be evangelist. Why did God give ground keepers the five? fold ministry why did he give the ministry of the fivefold to the body of christ to the church universal so that he can perfect 
the saints. You you can't have the 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 aesthetic of of the ground if you don't have any perfection with the equipment. If you don't know how to utilize the prophet. The prophet ain't here to prophesy you a new car, new house. The prophets of old, they came and told you, get your house in order. You got some stuff that's about to happen. And if you get your house in order, God will have mercy. The fivefold ministry, the apostle, the evangelist, the teacher, the pastor, using and maintaining ground keeping equipment such as the five-fold ministry giftings to the world you trying to hold back the apostle you trying to hold back the prophet you trying to hold back the evangelist you trying to hold back the pastor the teacher jesus came to the earth so he could restore humanity back to God. He started the work and now he's left it up to you, earth and vessels to finish the work. He's left it up to you as ground keepers. He needs some ground keepers who aren't afraid of a little dirt. <laughs> Scripture says, he formed man from dirt and dirt we shall return. Genesis, the, the third chapter, verse 19 in the message Bible says, until you return to that ground yourself, dead and buried, you started out as dirt. You end up dirt. You started out as dirt. He said, and until you return to the ground when they tell you ashes to ashes and dust to dust. When they say ashes to ashes and dirt to dirt. He said, when you return back to the stage and where you came from, let me tell you prophetically, you don't have to wait until your natural body leave this earth to become a groundskeeper. You got to know now that God is calling you for such a time as this. God need some groundkeepers who's willing to make a little investment. You need some ground keepers that don't mind making a little investments. You need some ground keepers who don't mind fasting and praying. You need some ground keepers that don't mind reading the word of God. You need ground keepers in the earth realm that don't mind witnessing about God. You need some ground keepers in the earth realm that don't mind reading the word. What are you saying, prophetess? I need ground keepers who understand you're gifted, but gifting without the anointing is through. <laughs> Yes, I need some ground keepers that understand you can sing, but without the anointing, you're just dirt, baby. Dirt, dirt, dirt. From dirt you come and dirt you're going to return. From dirt you come and dirt you're going to return. I, I need some folks. See, 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 let me just share with you while the I team gets this ready. I'm almost finished tonight. I want to share this with you, and I'm going to pray tonight at the end. I'm going to go down in warfare for you, 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 and you. I'm, huh, no, 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 bossy, no, 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 my shame. IT, go ahead and get ready to put up our presentation. And while IT is doing that, I want to share this with you. God spoke to me. Yes, God still speaks against what psychologist says, against what psychiatrist says. I remember my son was sick and he was in the hospital and they did not know what's wrong with him. He had a condition called rhodomolysis. It is when your muscles break 
down. And while his muscles was breaking down, oh glory, machine Ah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I need you to stay right there for a moment. Oh, God bless you. God bless you, IT. I need you to stay right there. There is a difference between a neighborhood groundkeeper and a commercial groundkeeper. A neighborhood groundkeeper, we all grew up with them. If you were like me, you grew up in the hood. You grew up with the neighborhood groundkeeper being on a bicycle and, and him pulling his lawnmower while he rides through the neighborhood cutting yards. Uh, uh, you know the neighborhood groundkeepers that would go from house to house walking with his lawn more, but, but commercial groundkeepers like, like, like the company True Green, they, they, they have commercial equipment, residential groundkeepers like, like your neighborhood. God help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I feel you, Jesus. Like your late neighborhood yard man, that that one that 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 would actually go from house to house on a bicycle, and, and he didn't have all of the equipment. Or maybe you had the last scaper that came by your house that, that had a flatbed truck with a few equipment on it, few equipment pieces on it. Those, those were groundkeepers that 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 residential neighborhoods had, but those are not the ones I'm addressing tonight. I want to address the commercial landscapers. I want to address the commercial ground keepers. I want to address those in the body of Christ that understand that I got a kingdom assignment. Yes, I'm located at this church, the local house. I, I might be a voice in the local house as a worship leader, huh? but I'm called to the body of Christ. I might be an intercessor huh? at the local house, but I'm called to wage war on the of the body of Christ. I'm calling for the commercial ground keepers tonight. If you will, let's, let's look at the first equipment we look at tonight is that of a commercial fairway or turf ruler. When you look at the commercial fairway or turf roller versus the residential. You look at the residential one, you're able to push it in your land, but the commercial one requires a skilled driver. Can I pause for one moment and, and, and just share with you an apostle's role is that of a fair way roller. That's why it's important that we have apostles in the body of Christ. An apostle is not a residential fair way or turf roller. In other words, an apostle is called to the body of Christ. So when you try to lock an apostle up at a local church, lock them up in a local ministry. I need you to do the comparison and the contrast. When I look at the man driving the fairway turf roller versus the one on the other side. Mm. Let, me, let me tell you what a fairway roller does. And we talking about apostles. Somebody just say, an apostle. You don't have to type it in. Just say an apostle. I, I'm glad to have some fairway turf rollers around me like an apostle, LaShawn Reese, like an apostle, Sonia Tucker Young, like an apostle, Pamela Smith Walker, like an apostle, 
Gloria Gaynor, those apostles that have played a vital role in my life. Why is it important as a groundkeeper that you have the five fold ministry in operation? It is important because an apostle is a fair way roller. It's generally used to roll over all the fairways on the golf course early in the season. In other words, they come in early in ministry and they begin to smooth out the areas in the work of ministry. They begin to smooth out the grounds before you even come in with the works of ministry. When you have an apostle, they come in early on in your calling and they begin to till the ground. They begin to work the ground while it's soft, while your heart is tender, while you still can be shaped after God. They begin to pour into you before you get to that hopefulness, my God. Before you get to that I know it all syndrome. Before you get to that, I got it going on spirit. Before you yield to that spotlight demon, an apostle like a four fairway roller comes in and it smooths out the rough areas in ministry. Allowing an apostle in your church is equivalent to allowing a fairway roller to run over the top of the golf course. It smooths out the fairway so they are not bumpy and can allow golf balls down to the fairway over an even surface. So when an apostle comes in, an apostle prepares the way like John the Baptist. And apostles say, you got some rough edges, but I see the good in you. An apostle is that groundkeeper that come in and say, you don't have a clean mouth, but I know how to work with your daughter. I know how to get your stuff together. I know how to clean you from the inside out. I know how to look beyond all your rough edges and see your need. Mm-hmm. An apostle is needed in the ground keepers. An, a ground keeper in the commercial industry. Maybe the local residential yard man can get away with not having a fair way roller, but, 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 but a commercial property has to have an apostle in operation. And you call him a bishop in some denominations. You call him an overseer in some denominations. But in my Bible, it says that I gave some to be an apostle. Go ahead, next woman of God. Next, I'm, I'm going to get out of your way. What? Go next to the next slide. We, we look at the prophet, my God. A prophet. When we look at a residential lawnmower, you look at that residential lawnmower, and you're looking at a local residential prophet, that one that got the gift to prophesy, but they don't operate as a prophet, but they're ready to come and cut down in the local church, but you call with your local anointed to the local house just to prophesy, but that doesn't make you a prophet. But then you got commercial prophets. <laughs> Like those that are on this call that understand I got a bigger territory to reach. So I got to go in and I got to go in and I got to go in deep. Why? Because I got to go in as a prophet. Listen, listen, listen. A lawn more does more than keep the grass in check. According to Bobcat of york.com, it helps get the nutrients back in your soil. It helps fight against 
weeds, when you get the commercial prophets, you got a prophet, Joshua Giles, who understands that I gotta do more than just prophesy houses, cars, and land. I gotta let the people know what's getting ready to happen in the earth realm. When I got a prophet that operates in a commercial arena, global apostolic movement is a commercial movement. It's not residential. So they're not showing up at every house. It's not residential. So you don't hear them on every broadcast lifting an offering. It's not residential. So you don't find them trying to open doors for themselves. I'm talking about, yeah, those that are under Chief Apostle LaShawn Reese, as a commercial prophet, you understand that when you come forth to the body of Christ and you begin to prophesy, it keeps you connected to the property itself. In other words, you become familiar to the house or the houses or the earth realm that God has called you to prophesy to. When we look at the prophets of old, they came with a sound and that sound shook the earth. God said, I'm looking for ground keeping prophets that understand you are not a residential household name, but I'm getting ready to cause you to reach the masses and connect with the masses and bring nutrients to those. How is it that I'm going to bring nutrients? Because even when you cutting them down, when you cut down the grass, the grass, that's the fastest way when that grass go back to its own foundation, it draws the grass that's still in the ground, draws nutrients from the grass that has fallen to the ground. The scripture says, unless a seed fall to the ground and die, I come to tell you that some of you haven't died to your flesh and therefore God is saying, I can't make you a ground keeper. I can't get you to the place on a commercial level because when I give you a word and something comes to pass, you say, I, 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 I prophesied that to you. I prophesied that to you. And didn't it come to pass? Am I talking right? Am I on point? Is it me that God used to help you get your car, your house? God said, I'm not looking for those type of prophets. I'm looking for commercial prophets that said, I'm not coming with a generic word. I'm coming with the word from God to reach the masses. <laughs> move on, woman of God. I'm almost finished. Move, move. Let's look at residential sprayers. <laughs> Residential sprayers are the teachers in the body of Christ. Residential sprayers are the teachers in the body of Christ. They're the ones, sprayers, 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 sprayers. So a yard man may use a residential sprayer like you see on the picture. You know, we go to Home Depot or Lowe's and we got some insects in our yard and so we grab just for a moment a little spray can a spray bottle and we go in our yards and begin to spray but when you look at a commercial sprayer a commercial sprayer is one that we look at what a company like true green uses to spray it's the equipment that true green used to attack weeds in a large area. Who is this you're talking about, prophetess? I'm talking about the teachers in the body of Christ when they're no longer teaching sound doctrine, when they're no longer teaching the word of God with accuracy. I'm looking for sprayers. God help me, Holy Ghost. He said they won't desire sound doctrine anymore. He said they will have itching ears, rather a lie than the truth. But I'm looking for some teachers that's willing to attack false doctrine, especially when 
one is located in difficult places, when it's located in those stony hearts that you, you don't want to approach anyone in another religion because you don't know enough about the kingdom to approach and challenge them. But commercial prayers say, I don't care who say they rule and domain over these areas. I'm a teacher of the word. I'm going into areas that nobody else would go in. Mm. They don't want those kinds of people. Commercial prayers, they come to attack false doctrines. Commercial spreads, those are the people on Bible study nights, they come in when you don't come in because you don't really want to hear the word of God. Are you talking right, prophetess? I'm talking right, God. Our next one on our slide show would be our spreader. Our spreader. <laughs> Where are you, evangelist? <laughs> we know the local residential grand yard man, even in his best state, can't compare or reach the magnitude that the commercial spreaders can reach those evangelists. You know, growing up, we didn't have ground keepers that were professionals. I remember my granddaddy would be out there with the, you see the fertilizer, the weed and feed, and he would have on a glove and dip his hand in there and he would spread it in the yard. But it could only go so far. I wanna prophesy to the evangelist tonight because this is your season. This is the season God is calling you to go in the hedges and highways and compel men to come. That's why you're under such an attack. A yard man, he will put his hand in a glove and throw seeds, but he was limited to what he could do. Can I prophesy to you tonight that you've been faithful evangelist and God said I'm about to commercialize your anointing. I know I'm about to expand your borders. I'm about to make your name great. Why? Because I need you to disperse the anointing over areas that man never anticipated you ever coming. I come to tell you God is about to attach your name to those commercial industries. Ah, like large ministries and folks are going to ask like they did Mephibosheth, how is it that you got here? You got a limp in one leg and you got issues in your life. How is it that you're at the king's table. I come to tell you tonight that God is about to enlarge your territory. He's about to advance you to the kingdom of God. And the reason we are in the holy of holies, the reason we're in holy week is because God wants you to understand that you're ordained and anointed this night to become a groundskeeper. That's why Mary began to look at the gardener, which was really our savior. And she said, tell me where you laid him because if you tell me where you laid him, I'll go and I'll get him because I myself have become a groundskeeper. I myself have been called to to do greater works. I myself uh, have been called to the hedges and highways. I myself have been called from a life of sin. I myself have been called from the dirt, from the earth, from the dust. And now I got to go back and collect those that have the same bio, resume, lifestyle that I once had. My God. God said, I'm looking for some ground 
keepers. I'm looking for someone that can maintain the aesthetics of my kingdom. Scripture says thy kingdom come in earth, thy kingdom come to the earth realm. Scripture says thy will be done. What is thy will? My will is to do the meat of my father. My will is to do the will of my father. Where are you ground keepers? Why are you holding back? Jesus said, I started the work, but I'm calling you to finish it. That's why he said, greater works shall you do. That's why he said, greater works. He said, I need the apostle to stand up. I need the prophet to stand up. I need you who have been mislabeled in the body of Christ because you had the gift to prophesy, because you had the gift to set up one church that doesn't make you an apostle. That doesn't mean that you now come from under the apostolic covering and go start your own work just because you led one or two to the Lord. Don't make you an evangelist. He said, but I'm calling the ground people. Who are the ground keepers? Those in the body of Christ. You haven't been recognized. You haven't been called out. As a matter of fact, Kia, you don't mind being in the pews. You don't mind sitting on a roll and not being recognized or acknowledged. But God said, I'm calling you out. Martin, I'm calling you out. Span, I'm calling you out. No, 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 go Shanda, April. I'm calling you out. Sheko, Rabbo Shella, I'm calling you out. Martin, no, 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 go Shanda, no, no, go Sheka. He said, I got a work to be done in the earth realm, but I need ground keepers who's not afraid to go to the tomb and say, Show me where you laid him. Go to that dead church. And tell them, show me where you laid him. Where did you lay him at last? Where was the last place the glory of God was revealed? Where was the last place my anointing was released? Show me where you laid him. Show me. Could it be that God has made you a groundkeeper at that dead church because he want to utilize you to bring back his glory? I need you to understand as a groundkeeper, God said, even when the ground seem as if it cannot be tilled, even when the ground is not yielding, Fruit, even when the ground is not being what is called to be productive, I'm looking for ground keepers that don't mind going in and surveying the ground. I know it's a little rough right now, but if I can get you to understand, I know it's a little rough right now, but if I can get you to accept the call, I know that I'm going I'm speaking to you tonight. The devil told you to give up. He told you to abort. Why did he fight you so hard in preaching this week? Because you are a ground keeper. You've been called to maintain the ground. What is the ground? The earth is the Lord and the fullness. Sean and I'm a soul. Robo shine ke ye na na maso. Scripture says, "Ika la la robo shine." Scripture says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything that's in this world, it belongs to me. It's time for you to reclaim the kingdom. How am I going to reclaim the kingdom? He said, I want you to pray thy kingdom come. Now it's time for revival to break out in the earth. But the only way I can bring revival is if I got some glory.
glory carrier. How can I get glory carriers when I don't have ground keepers? He said, I need some people that understand the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. The dope dealer belong to him. The prostitute belong to him. Even you, 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 and you belong to him. How is it that I can be a groundskeeper when I'm dirty like this? I got my hands dirty, got dirt on my face, got dirt on my glasses, got dirt in my hair, got dirt on my clothes. How is it that I can be a groundskeeper? God said, I'm calling you back to the earth realm to do your first works over ground keeper round one it's in your hands chief apostle ground keeper oh about to leave out one thank you woman of god ground keeper ground keepers ground keepers ground keepers Trimmers, trimmers, trimmers. Look at the residential trimmers. I remember when we had a residential trimmer. Oftentimes we had to keep placing new thread in it because that was what they used in the trimmer in order to get into the weed. But with a commercial trimmer, you don't need all of that. So God is saying to you, to you, to you tonight, he said, I want you to understand that even in this season, pastors, <laughs> Lord, I left you out. No, I didn't, pastors. You got the responsibility to understand how important it is to keep an attractive appearance of an area that God has called you to maintain. You got to make sure the edges, who are the edges, the saints, aren't just growing wild and out of control. Pastors, you got to trim the saints so that you can keep them looking aesthetic, looking beautiful. You got to trim the saints so when they go out, they don't look wild and out of control, unkept, my God. So the five-fold ministry is just like the equipment that we utilize as ground keepers in the commercial industry. Who are you and where have you laid him? Show me where you laid him. Who are you? Are you the ground keeper? Are you tending the ground? Are you the sexton, the one? that keep record of all who's in the ground? Or are you the cemetery ground keeper? The one that maintain the ground? No, I come to tell you I'm a kingdom shifter. And because I'm a kingdom shifter, I have the anointing to keep the ground that God has entrusted to me, prophet, pastor, Evangelist, teacher, apostle, are you a ground keeper? It's in your hands, chief apostle. Robo Koshindi, Remendo Kulibasi, Rabakasha, Nanalorobosi, Robo Koshindi, Hallelujah. 
Glory to God, woman of God, woman of God, woman of God. Are you a ground keeper? Amen. Can we be trusted to be employed by God? Can we be responsible enough to hold on to the assignment and cherish it? My God, how many times have we failed God? How many times were we cursed because we were unproductive? My God, ground keepers, we've got to understand our assignment. As the woman of God said, we have to be fruitful and multiply. Yes, we are ground keepers. My God, so we even have to possess the necessary skills. Jesus. Chief Apostle, Come as on, you're Apostle. speaking, the spirit of the living God is saying, he said, we are in Holy Week. We're in the week that Jesus came back to the earth real. No man knows the exact date. No man knows the exact hour. But all we know is that he's coming. Yeah. And when he comes, you can't have your works undone. Thank you. Jesus understood the importance of someone coming to the earth realm to maintain the ground. He understood the importance yes. of coming to the earth realm and renovating the ground, Chief Thank Apostle. Thank you, Jesus. He Hallelujah. understood the importance of coming to the earth realm yes. and renovating the ground and cultivating the ground and getting the ground back to its original state. And he said, now that I got the ground in a place that at least she can be fruitful and yes, come on. Fly, I need some ground people. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh, my Jesus. Lord, Lord, Lord. Stop. Glory to God. That's why Thank it's such a God. struggle for people like you, Apostle, who have an authentic gift for the body of Christ. That's why it's such a struggle for people to let you into their house. Why? Because they don't understand the importance. Jesus, Jesus my God. In the earth realm, mm. he came you, with Jesus. the assignment, Chief Apostle. Mm. He came with the assignment of renovating. Yes. Can I tell you, until he came to the earth, chief apostle, the earth was no longer any good. And Jeez. it grieves God, the condition of his earth, of yes. his world. And so Jesus said, let me go, Father. Mm, my I'll separate God. myself from you. Jesus. So that I can go and renovate. I'll take the renovation project. Mm, Anybody want to take the project? Thank you. To God. Renovate Hallelujah. The Thank land you, to renovate the earth, to renovate humanity. Yes, come Jesus on. Jesus said, Greater work shall you do. Thank you, in Jesus. my name. I've mm. already started the good work, but yes. you shall complete it. <laughs> and because the work that I start in you, I, mm. I got confidence enough that you got the qualifications. Yes. Maybe you never went to agriculture school. Maybe you never had the experience of sitting Come in on a now. class, but you've gone through YouTube. Everything yes. is on YouTube. You can learn mm -hmm. how to renovate a house. You yes. can learn how to deliver a baby. You can learn how to start a bank account. Even mm, my God. Jesus. Right from the comfort of your home. So God is Amen. saying, keep apostle, this week, as we commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord, I'm looking for a groundkeeper. Yes. I have openings Thank you, for groundkeepers. And the My good thing God. about it, you might be a spreader, mm. you might be a sprayer, mm. you might be a trimmer. Come on. You might be the one that God called to be a fairway roller. Mm. But whatever your anointing is, yes, a lawnmower. Thank you. Whatever Jesus. your anointing is, he said, I got vacancies. 
I got availabilities. My God. I got openings. Yes. Don't care if you ain't qualified according to man. Mm -hmm. But you met my qualifications. You who are willing Thank and you. obedient, yes. come. Uh, come. I know you don't have your masters of divinity. Come on. Come. I know they may not be supportive of you, but come. Jesus. I know they shut you down, say you pray too loud, but come. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Greater Jesus. works. Greater works. Yes. Greater works. Yes. Shall yes. you do. Don't you leave because there's a prophetic mantle on our chief apostle that tonight, God, don't you move into the very end of this broadcast. Chief apostle is in your hands. God bless you. Praise God. God, we thank you for this great woman of God. And we pray that you would touch her now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we bind every attack, my God, that will be generated because of this word. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that no backlash will touch her in the name of Jesus. Father, drape your anointing upon her now. Oh God, drape your mantle that will become a shield uh, that when the enemy comes, comes in like a flood. You, Lord, will lift up her standard. Father, we thank you uh, for the hearts that were impacted uh, by the word of God on tonight. We pray, uh, oh God, that you would strengthen our prophetess. We pray, God, uh, that you will refresh her a new God. Uh, we pray, Lord God, uh, as the line of communication is open, uh, oh God, fresh oil from heaven, uh, God will fall upon her now uh, in the matchless name of Jesus, Father. We thank you, God, for the word uh, that was released on tonight. Uh, oh, God, yes, it was heard. Uh, it was fertilized on good ground. Uh, yes, we received it uh, in the name of Jesus, Father. Uh, we thank you for her being a groundkeeper. And we pray that you strengthen her now in Jesus' name. Amen. What a word on tonight. What a word on tonight. And we just bless God, amen, again for Prophetess Tracy Magwood. We thank God, amen, for the anointing, the oil that is on her life. Look at that, how the analogies Praise the Lord that was given to ground tools, to merchandise, to things that are used mechanics in order to till the ground. So the question tonight is, are you a ground keeper? Amen. In order to be a ground keeper, I can't be seized by a moment of fear because I understand that I've got to get dirty. Come on now. Glory to God. Look, and this is just night two. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is just night two. Amen. We're going to bring our announcements because we want you to continue to be blessed with the word of God as it comes forth nightly. Come on, IT, with our announcements. All right, our announcements are as follows. Don't worry, I got you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We will be here on tomorrow night. We have Apostle Sonia Tucker Young that will be coming forth with the undoctorated gospel. So meet us here on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We're also here on Thursday night, Wednesday night, I'm sorry. We have Senior Pastor Olden Reese. Thursday night, we have Evangelist Michelle Watson praise the Lord. And then we have our Good Friday service. We have, my God, some dynamic speakers that will be coming 
and forth. Amen. And we are global apostolic movement. Yes, we are a global movement for the 21st century saints. So would you join us even on Sunday morning for 6 a.m. sunrise service as we come forth with our very own pastor, Beverly Cole. So as you can see, we are excited. We are on fire. We are ready and we are willing for the work of the Lord as we celebrate and commemorate this holy week. Yes, we're going before the Lord with fire and vigilance and we are determined, my God, God to do what God has called us to do. So we will stand bold and we will stand tall. Amen. And we will be that groundkeeper that the Lord has called. If you would like to give, amen, to this great movement, we have our cash app dollar sign GA movement. Yes, you can reach us. You can cash app. You can zell us. GA movement at gmail.com. Excuse me, GA movement 21. I'm sorry. At gmail dot com. Yes, God is good and he's worthy of every praise. We just thank God, amen, for the word that was planted and sold on good ground tonight. Didn't your hearts burn? Amen. With fire to receive the revelation of the word of truth. Amen. Did not our hearts burn? Amen. When we felt the anointing of God that was coming forth through the word of God. So we celebrate you on tonight. Look, I I need you to please share this broadcast. We are a global movement and we're trying and we are going to reach the nations, but we need your help. Please share this broadcast. We do have our flyers on our website. Amen. We have our flyers on our Facebook page, Global Apostolic Movement. If you would just share and invite, invite five people, invite 10 people to be with us because we know that deliverance is coming forth nightly. Amen. So again, we thank you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Same Zoom link. Amen. The same page, Global Apostolic Movement. God bless you. Good night until we see you and we meet again. May the peace of God be with you, make you rich and add no sorrow. In Jesus name. Amen.